Hello everybody, I was asked to make a video about how to safely run your water cooling system and also about how to maintain your water cooling system for quite a while right now. This kind of video also is missing from my complete water cooling guide that I did almost two years ago. Never had a chance to do such video, but now it's actually very good time for me because I just migrating from my silent sniper build to my Venom and uh, this computer produced most of YouTube, YouTube videos that you watched for last a year and a half. One of my favorite builds, but it's also right now it's very good candidate to talk about what I did to maintain it safely for a year and a half and uh, what I would recommend to do for any of you who also would like to know what maintenance, so to speak, you need for your water cooling system. According to my own videos, I finished this build in January 2012. Didn't even touch this computer since I just moved it to my basement, basically, in my cave. And I use it since. I didn't uh, change liquid, I didn't uh, clean computer, I didn't even vacuum it. So it's a little bit dusty, forgive me for that. But many of you probably will ask me right now that usually it's recommended to change liquid uh, every 9 to 12 months. I would say yes, that would be my general recommendation, but if you be more diligent in the beginning of the process, you can extend the, your maintenance window a little bit more. And let me tell you what exactly I mean about this. First of all, when you assemble your computer and you build your water cooling components, make sure you spend a little bit more time and you clean your system from any accidental garbage might be inside. This is specifically important for uh, traditional dual pass kind of radiators because they have a flux that, um, inside that used in the manufacturing process uh, of making a radiator and uh, eventually with the warm water it gets flushed out of the radiator and uh, basically deposited in your tubing, in your CPU block and um, anywhere else where flux can stuck. So that will reduce appearance of your system and also will potentially can lead to the clockage of, uh, for example, CPU block. Usually if you start getting problems, it happens with um, in CPU block. Why? Is because the CPU block is a uh, most fine part of your water cooling system and uh, this most narrow water pass is going through it and usually if they, you have any kind of garbage that get out of whatever other parts of water cooling system they get basically stuck in the water cpu blow because it's acting as a filter of sort so 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 cleaning is a really important if you do a really good on a job on a cleaning you can run system a little bit longer also, it's important to make sure you don't chip out on a tube. You, you can go to, I don't know, hardware store and get cheapest tube possible, but this might start leaching some plasticizer, which is kind of gooey component, and uh, it also will start depositing all over your loop. S the certain tubing suffering from this um, also available on the market as water cooling tubing. So what you basically need to look at different reviews, forums and check out which tubing seems produce less amount of plasticizer. I use a TFC tube in all of my builds. I never had issues with plasticizer with TFC tube, but they recently discontinued uh, the tubing line and uh, they actually start a new one with a new production facility. So we can't rely on old experience with TFC tube uh, on current situation with a new tube that released by that company. Another way to go around plasticizer issue is going with a hard tubing. The hard tube basically just plastic tube uh, like BP uh, Crystal Links or a bunch of other manufacturers start jumping on this uh, right now. And it's, it's hard plastic tube that uh, doesn't have a plasticizer because it's not flexible. It's still determined to see how long those uh, plastic tube will, will run and it will produce any cracks in long term because this trend is just starting picking up in the last few months. But it, this is a, one of the ways to get rid of plasticizer issue. Or as I said, just to look online, check with your friends. If they have a good experience with particular tube, you just can use it and there's no problem. Like. In my computer right here and the last but not least thing that you need to watch is what kind of liquid are you using 
So a lot of people would say that uh, just go distill water and whatever additive to it, but um, I'm personally trying to use a liquid that guaranteed has um, anti-corrosive properties because most people what I'm hearing is only care about biocid part of the equation. So you say basically you go on any forum, you will be most likely told get distilled water and silver coil. Well, that's great, but actually the more problems with your loop probably will can happen due to different corrosion processes that coming from impurities on, on variety of your components. Usually water works pretty good. Uh, grade of the copper used on blocks mostly likely will be very high. But if we're talking about radiators, it's a totally different story. Cost of radiators constantly goes down, down, down. Quality of raw materials also goes down, down, down. So when you look, if anybody would bother to do any sort of analysis, what kind of uh, copper or copper alloys you have in your current radiator scrub, you might find a lot of stuff that you don't really want to see there, like lead and zinc and um, other impurities that actually not really work together. So you start getting some corrosion process going on throughout your system. So if you have a liquid that has anti-corrosive properties, it's actually more important than the liquid that you have only biocide properties because also quite often anti-corrosive properties are pretty poisonous as well. So you get rid of any, any microorganisms by default as well. I using Pizer one Pure plus um, some uh, dye. So I actually did a little bit lighter shade of of green right here you can see it's uh, not not very strong green that's because i just used a couple drops of um, uh, fizzer dye in the system and i just get had a tint of, of green so it's not like um, the color changed over the time that's actually pretty good but the fact that i'm using anti-corrosive uh, glycol based liquid allows me to run system for a year and a half you see this everything is clean you can see the blocks is absolutely clean and um, there are no clockage or anything like this. Later, we will power up the system. You'll see that um, our flow rate of my system pretty good. So there definitely nothing changed since then. So the bottom line is um, if you do your homework, you use the right components, most likely you will have trouble free for at least a year guaranteed. After that, maybe it's advisable to change your liquid. Uh, you can stretch it a little bit as uh, a negative equation of going longer period, less than 12 months, is the fact that you actually, some metals from a radiator and other components like fittings, get a little bit dissolved in your liquid, so it became more conductive over the time. So if you long too long, too long um, your liquid became more conductive than it was in the beginning, and if you get any sort of leak, it's more chances that things can shortcut. So the shorter uh, period of using liquid makes it uh, more safer to use in a way. And uh, I just didn't do it because I get busy, but in normal conditions, I probably would change it earlier. That's, that's part of the story that covers the beginning of the process. But now, what about the actual maintenance itself? I would say that normally there's a two ways to address the problem, which probably give you similar results. Uh, it also depends uh, how lazy or compulsive obsessive you are. The easiest way, if you do everything right, all you need to do is just drain your liquid, maybe flush it with uh, distilled water to get rid of whatever remaining things left, or and refill with the same liquid. This is the best way to do. If you're changing liquid, and, and God forbid you're also changing manufacturer, that definitely make a very good flush of your system, so uh, no uh, remaining parts of previous liquid will stay. because. When you use different manufacturers, you never know what they exactly they're using in their uh, proprietary mix, so some chemical might react and you don't want it. So if you flush it well, then it will be guaranteed, uh, will not create any chemical reaction whatsoever. If you use the same liquid, you can relax a little bit more, just flush it a little bit and just refill with the liquid, the same type of liquid that you had before. So it's, it's less critical. Most people will do just that. So once a year you change your liquid and you do it probably a couple times in a lifetime of computer because realistically speaking, after a couple of years, more likely you want to change some components or upgrade. So you have to tear down your system anyways. And it's a totally different story. But if you change nothing, you just don't want to use 
computer, simple liquid change will cut it. Second, more comprehensive way, and not necessarily it's uh, required by any means, is actually go a little bit deeper and disassemble your system. And when you disassemble your system, you can do completely change your tubing because um, certain things get deposited on the walls and uh, it might significantly impact you, but if you put new tubing, it's, it's, you get rid of certain things get uh, sitting on your walls. And also you might change the color if you want and things like this. So the tube is one thing and it's a relatively cheap thing to do. Second, you might want to look inside of CPU block. It's less critical to see what's going on you, on your graphical card because uh, um, you see the water channels in the graphical cards. It's pretty rough, so it's like big water passes everywhere so it's it's unlikely anything stuck there you can see that my block is absolutely clean so no issues whatsoever but in, as i said earlier in the cpu block you might have um, some junk stuck into it and that will reduce your water flow and this will reduce your performance of uh, how your block is performing so if you want to be very diligent you actually can remove completely your cpu block unscrew it open it up and wash it with um, pressurized type of water or anything just get rid of whatever junk gets stuck there you will have something for sure because a few things happening there one is you potentially can have certain items flushed out of your radiator second the tubing that you have doesn't even matter if it um, pvc tube or maybe hard tube i think the result will be pretty much the same in the end it's actually not perfectly smooth to micron level so, and water over the time actually work as a very fine abrasive, abrasive right? So you get your uh, inner side of tube a little bit polished by the water itself. And all those um, micro particles of, of those in, imperfections of the inside wall of your tube, they eventually get deposited somewhere, either on the walls of the tube or blocks itself, or stuck in the radiator, or if they're a little bit bigger, they probably might stuck in, in your CPU block. So that's the reason why you open your block after a year of use, you definitely will find at least something there. Not necessary uh, to affect your performance a lot, especially if you clean your system well before. But as I said, if you want to be absolutely diligent, you can do this but I don't consider this mandatory, in my personal opinion. So, opening GPU blocks, unless you get in trouble, basically doesn't yield much of the benefit over the effort. If you want, it's fun for you to do so, fine, but not really necessary. If you start getting in trouble, obviously situation completely change. One of the example of the trouble, you can use some liquid and let's say, something went wrong, the stuff coagulated, you start have all kind of uh, dye or anything like this get stuck everywhere, then you have no choice, you have to clean all your blocks, throw away your tube, do pretty good wash for your radiator and stuff like this. But we're talking about normal uh, situations right here and um, as I said, you can wash your CPU block, but it's, it's not really mandatory in my opinion. Another moment that also worthwhile mentioning is that it doesn't matter how well you assemble your system, how tight you connected every component, certain amount of liquid get escaped from your computer regardless. Because the tube is breathing a little bit and you might have a certain imperfection of your connection that allows certain amount of liquid to get evaporated over the time. Usually you can expect no more than inch in a quarter which is like two centimeters maybe from, from your regular uh, 50 or 60 millimeter reservoir. If you start losing noticeable amount of liquid per week, then you start start looking for problems in your loop. And variety of this situation, why it's happening is qu quite wide. You simply can, don't have a, your cup and your reservoir tightened up strong enough, so a liquid basically get evaporated and escapes through your reservoir. You might have a micro, hole in your radiator and because of the airflow going through it all the time it nothing drips but it's get leaked and evaporated right away so it's really hard to troubleshoot but it's definitely something you have to figure out eventually under normal conditions uh, very little amount of liquid is lost but there is still some and to show you i would like you to look here on a reservoir so you see it's full right now but when i start my system you will see that actually a certain amount of liquid not there 
<clears throat> because now I have this tube is empty and uh, you'll see why. So click here. So you see this, this is how much liquid I lost uh, over a year and a half. So my system pretty good. But still, the certain amount gone. Normally you just top up your levels, just look every quarter or so and you see this little bit liquid went down, just add liquid, that's all you need to do. You don't need to worry about it. If more liquid loss, then look for more troubleshooting. One important part of preventive maintenance that I would like to talk is um, things to look as everything is good with health of your water cooling systems. And there's a few ways you can do it. One is you need to monitor your temperatures and kind of figure out what it was in the beginning. And a few months later, look if you're in the same levels or not. If your temperatures start going up, I'll make correction of the room temperature as well. Because if you check it in the winter and then in the summer, obviously it's go up, right? So use common sense. But if you see the temperature in the same condition went up, probably something doesn't work as, a, as it used to work a few months ago. So start looking if there any clockage or like any other kind of problems appears. Another way to look on things and maybe a bit easier, if you use and purchase some sort of flow meter, it can be visual, just the spinning thing is turning and you kind of figure out, okay, I think it's now a little bit slower or actually have electronic one that um, show you exact number if you start seeing your numbers goes down then it's also indications that your flow rate went down and um, usually diminishing flow rate is indication that something doesn't work well in your system because most likely you have had some junk stuck, stuck in your CPU block and your flow rate reduce, obviously the amount of water going through the blocks reduce as well and your temperature goes up. So that's something that allows you to more or less understand what's going with your loop. Other than that, there's not much to do about maintenance. If you build it right, you worry free for about a year. If something happens, just look on your flow rates, look in your temperatures. I'm not even talking about bigger problems. If you have a puddle of water on the bottom of your uh, computer, that's as obvious a problem as well. But it might just happen because your kid decide to take a scissors and cut the tubing. I hope that this uh, type of uh, video help a little bit to answer a number of questions about uh, water cooling maintenance, preventive maintenance, and what to expect of usage of your computer. And uh, I would like uh, to thank everybody who supports my channel and uh, if you have any uh, bright ideas what other videos or tutorials you'd like to see, you're always welcome to leave your comment and um, I will put it into consideration for future videos. Thank you and see you soon.